Hello, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. In this video, I am going to talk about how to let go of the old story that you are still carrying about your specific person. So recently, last week, I asked a question on my community tab here on YouTube. What is one of the main areas that you are struggling with when it comes to manifesting your specific person? Many, many people said, letting go of the old story. How do I let go of the old story? Or I keep ruminating in the old story. I keep ruminating in what went wrong, why I'm hurt, how it doesn't feel good, what happened that didn't feel good, old memories, things like this. And so I want to dive deep into this. I actually took some notes. I'm going to be looking down at my computer. Yeah, I want to do a deep dive. How do we let go of the old story about your specific person so you can manifest them? That's what I'm going to talk about in this video. Before I do jump in, please know that I am launching something very, very special for all of you manifesting a specific person. I have been working on it behind the scenes for months now, something really exciting and special. And more information is coming out very, very soon about it. If you want to be the first to know, there's a link directly below this video in my description. You can sign up with your email with that link. I'll also post it in the comments. And um, it, there's going to be a six-part video series as well, so you will hear all about that if you sign up. And it's all about how to manifest your specific person. So I can't wait to release more information about this to you soon. So sign up, and yeah, you'll hear all about it. Okay. So let's jump into this video. How do you release the old story about your specific person? So just a little recap, of course, why do we want to release the old story, we might say? It's because whatever we are thinking about, ruminating on, um, believing, feeling in a predominant way is shaping who we are, actually. It's shaping your belief systems. It's shaping your self-concept. It's shaping who you think and feel you are. Anything that is going on inside of you, as I call the inner world, is shaping and molding your perception of reality. And we're having thoughts all the time that are shaping our perception of reality. And then what our perception of reality is, is what manifests in the outer world. And so whatever you're predominantly thinking or the thoughts you continue to go back to or the memories you continue to go back to are shaping your manifestations. And so, of course, if you are manifesting a specific person and something went wrong in the past, there's some sort of old story, there's an old memory, there's things that didn't feel good and you continue to go back and think about those things, what you're doing is continuing to impress your subconscious mind with that old story, and that is continuing to manifest a matching reality, right? So if the old story is, they hurt me, then the matching reality that you're manifesting is, they're hurting me. You continue to feel hurt by them and by the situation, okay? So yes, we do want to release the old story, um, we can talk about it as releasing the old story, but I kind of look at it in a little bit of a different way. So I have three ways that you can approach this um, to release that old story so that you are no longer ruminating in the past and you can actually create a new reality. Because again, how do we manifest our reality? What we think and feel and believe within. So we want to change the story within to get a different outer result. So here are my suggestions. The first one is when you find yourself going into the old story, you start ruminating and thinking about an old story with your specific person and it doesn't make you feel good. It's something that hurts. It's something that doesn't feel good. What you want to do is immediately transition to a new thought. Now, that's easier said than done, but this is all about training your mind and training your inner world. That's all you're doing with manifesting. You're training yourself into a new pattern. And just like everything else in the world, when we have a pattern of doing something all the time, it's very easy to just slip back into that pattern. So if you've really trained yourself to think this memory that doesn't feel good about your specific person, 
It's easy to continue to go back to that memory. So this is where it takes a little bit of willpower. You have to literally stop that thought. And I, I do suggest if you're alone and not in public, I do suggest like making motions like this, like no, stop pushing it away, like literally making the motions of pushing it away and redirecting yourself to a new thought, to a new story. Now, let's, get, let's give you an example and also an easy way that you can implement this that I think can make it um, a lot easier to do. So for example, let's say you have the thought of, you know, maybe your specific person ghosted you and it really hurt and it doesn't it didn't feel good. So what you want to do is if that thought comes to you and you start to feel that reality of your specific person ghosting you, you want to push it away and you want to have a go-to thought that is going to help you feel some relief about this particular situation. A very um, potent way to start to anchor that new thought is to write it down. You probably have noticed that when you script or when you write something down, you know, maybe it's just me, but I think this is true for a lot of people. When I write something down, it starts to kind of sink in even a little deeper. It's not like up here in the air. It's, it's, it's becoming tangible. So your SP ghosted you, that thought comes in, you start to feel angry. Nope, push it away and have a go-to thought that you can anchor back into. They feel bad about that. They didn't, they were acting on their wounds. They didn't mean to. Um, some Those two feel actually kind of good for, for this type of situation. If you can think of other ones, post them in the comments. But it's something like, uh, they feel bad about doing that. They never wanted to hurt me. They don't like hurting me. These ones are good. And you want to, if you can, you want to have maybe even a little journal that you can carry around with you. And when those old thoughts or that old story pops up, because you're really trying to retrain yourself out of this particular patterning, you want to like really put some work in here, get a journal and write down things like they didn't want to hurt me. They didn't mean to hurt me. They hate hurting me. They feel really guilty. Whatever new thought about that situation, that's going to bring you relief. That's what you want to do. You want to very quickly push out the old thought and then go directly to and put your focus on the new thought. Remember, like everything else, like if you've ever started an exercise routine or you've changed your diet or you've started a new way of living, the, the beginning phases of changing our patterns are the hardest, right? Because we're retraining yourself, ourselves. It's almost like you're speeding in one direction this way and you're like slamming on the brakes and trying to speed in the direction this way. It does take some, some effort. So that's why I suggest like having a journal and be really diligent. Anytime that type of old thought or old memory pops up, just, just refuse, like cut it out and refuse to focus there and start focusing on the new thing that brings you some relief. Okay. So that's number one. Um, Number two is actually kind of connected to that. And that is maybe in the same journal, write down as many new thoughts as you can that bring you relief about your specific person. You can either do this in the form of scripting. So writing a whole new story where you feel like good, the story that makes you feel good about you and your specific person. So you go into an imaginal act, you imagine the two of you together, you imagine what it feels like and you write down the story or I actually, and I would do both and have a list of particular thoughts about your specific person that when you think them, they make you feel good. They make you feel better. So you got to choose these wisely. They're going to be different for every person. It's not necessarily, let's say your end result is, um, I want to get married to my specific person. So for some people, the thought of we're married is going to make them feel good and it's going to make them feel better. For some, it's going to feel like that's too far away and it doesn't actually bring relief. So you have to do a little bit of exploration. What are the very particular thoughts that make you feel good about you and your specific person? They can be things like, 
They're thinking about me. They miss me too. They don't like not having me around. It's really hard for them when I'm not with them. Um, they're still super attracted to me. They're thinking about me all the time. They're considering coming towards me. They are coming towards me. They want to text me. They want to be near me. They want to be close to me. They think I'm an amazing person. I'm super special to them. I'm just giving you all these different affirmations. You don't have to have just one affirmation. You guys know my style probably. I'm not a one affirmation type of person. To me, that's a little too dry. Um, I like having a lot of different affirmations that I can use if, you know, especially about a person, a specific person, if you want to use affirmations. Um, I like to have a lot of different ones I can use that all make me feel like the end result I want, which is relief, wanted, cared for, loved by my specific person. That's all you're trying to feel. Any technique is getting you into that state. They love me. They want me. They're thinking about me. They care about me. They're wondering how I am. They're missing me. All of the, all of these types of thoughts are getting you into that end state. And so what to do with this list, when you have a list of these types of affirmations, anytime the old story comes up, look at the list, read the list, remember the list, go through. You want to make sure you're not just mindlessly reading the list though. And I know when you are anxious and panicked and not feeling good, we have, um, that's, those are the times when we're less likely to go deep. But the thing is your relief is going deeper. So what I would do is I would read that, af that first affirmation on the list and I would really see if you can feel the truth of that affirmation. And then read the second one and really take a moment to see if you can feel the truth of it. See if it starts to bring you relief. That's the whole point. When you're transitioning out of an old story, you want to get into another state that brings you relief about your specific person. Okay, so this is my second idea of what you can do. My third idea. Okay, so my third uh, suggestion for changing the old story is, is this, and this is a little more broad, but if we're still in the phase of needing to change the old story, what it means is uh, probably, this is, this is my, this is my uh, you know, perception of it, but what's most likely happening is a practiced, deep knowing of your end result has not really landed inside of you yet. It hasn't anchored inside of you. What I mean by that, what those words mean is you haven't practiced imagining and feeling and believing in the new end result enough that that you're not swayed by the old story right so the old story only kind of gets us and takes us down if we're still a, like giving it so much attention and it still kind of is our dominant belief system the way to change dominant belief systems probably any and every manifesting teacher will, will say something similar to this. The way to change dominant belief systems is to practice new thoughts and practice the new feelings that they give you and practice the new visualizations. Practice controlling your inner world to create a new inner reality. And here's what's happening when we're manifesting and when we become manifesting masters, anyone who has started to master this process of living in the end, people who have mastered uh, manifesting their specific person, I've talked to dozens of them recently. I'll tell you more about that in that link I was telling you about earlier. Um, people who have mastered the practice of manifesting, manifesting their specific person, all of this, what they've done is they've practiced, really, really practiced focusing on a new inner reality and trusting that that new inner vision is actually the truth. So this isn't a surface level practice and you have to be real with yourself. Is the manifesting techniques you've been doing, have they been kind of surface level? They're not really changing you, changing what you feel, changing what you think. If so, you got to go a little deeper the way I do deeper is I close my eyes, I go within, I start to bring up a real deep visualization 
of me and my specific person together, let's say. I feel into what that's like. I go deep into it. I feel the feelings and I practice this over and over and over again. I practice it so much that it starts to feel normal. It starts to feel normal to be loved by my specific person because I've gone into my imagination so much and gone into the space where he's holding me so much that it starts to kind of blend with the outer reality. It's how it kind of feels to me. It's like, that's what's true. It's not so much that it's specifically true and you're looking to your 3D reality. I'm going to do a video about that soon. It's not that you're looking with your eyes, but the feeling of them being with you and loving you has become so familiar because you've practiced it within. This is just practicing living in the end, getting into that end state. That's the only thing you have to do to manifest your specific person. You have to go there over and over again. So those of you that are being thrown off by the old story, really the only thing to do is practice living in the end. So I have a lot of resources on how to do that. I have lots of courses down there on how to do that. And I am launching something else soon on how to do that. So stay tuned for all of it. But this is it. And once we live in the end, everyone who has knows what living in the end feels like will tell you this. You stop being swayed by the 3D reality. You stop being swayed by the old story because you know the new truth. You know the new truth that the two of you are going to be together. You know that. It's so true to you in here. You know it. And when you know it so deeply in here and you are not swayed, that's when it manifests. Okay, guys. Thank you so much for being here with me in this video. It was a long one. I love being here with you. Please make sure you subscribe to my channel. You like the video. You comment below. I will see you very soon. Bye.